Uh, I'll be presenting the top 10 mistakes uh, made by the young ophthalmologist in Vico in surgery. Uh, this is a video based compilation of some of these uh, surgeries are, have been done by me and some of them uh, while I was ass assisting uh, the trainees, the junior residents. So the important thing to realize is that the mistakes do happen. But it is not how we make mistakes but we how, how we correct them that eventually defines us. Uh, with this pretext, uh, we'll see 10 videos and we'll at least try to ha uh, highlight at least one point which we can take back home. This is a grade 3 cataract and uh, we're trying to make a, uh, this is a 2.2 uh, keratome, we're trying to make the wound. We see the eye is divided towards the nasal side, we're not able to enter the anterior chamber, the conjunctiva is getting torn. And this uh, usually happens when we're using uh, blades which have been used uh, before in multiple cases. And because the patients are poor and non-affording to trainees, we uh, often get these blades and can cause uh, your uh, rupture of the anterior capsule. In one such case where I was not, not able to enter the chamber completely, there was a partial entry into the anterior chamber with the blade. And I'm trying to uh, do the phaco conservation and as soon as we uh, bring the foot switch to uh, position 3, the chamber starts collapsing. Also, I'm not able to enter the anterior chamber, I'm not able to go towards the nucleus, it's kind of a strangulating feeling, so I have to enlarge or I have to make a, a proper wound and then things uh, change completely. So the wound construction is uh, one of the most important step of the phaco surgery. It is a good wound will set the stage for a successful uh, surgery. There are some important principles which you have to uh, understand is that eye must be firm prior to commencing creation of incision. We have to stabilize the eye on the opposite axis with the other hand and use familiar and fresh instruments. So this is the one mistake I have seen done the most number of times by any young ophthalmologist and that sets a bad uh, case henceforth. A second case in which it's a grade 3 cataract already uh, stained the anterior capsule trying to do uh, the capsulorexis using a cystitome. Changing the uh, direction each time but here the chamber becomes slightly shallow. Uh, refill the chamber with viscoelastic. But realize that I haven't uh, turned the flap back onto itself and the rexis starts going outwards. So here I'm trying to bring it back but I realize that it has already gone outside and now I don't think that it, I can bring it back with a cystitome. I take a capsulexis forceps and then pull it inwards and backwards. So we have now have a very large and eccentric rexis which is not uh, desired for any surgery and there is a peripheral uh, uh, extension in terms of uh, the shape of the rexis. So it's important to realize that the cystitome stretch uh, vector should be rotated at least every 45 to 50 degree to accomplish a well-shaped capsular uh, tomy, we have we may have to refill the anterior cham chamber if we don't have a st uh, we cannot stabilize the chamber and we uh, use a forceps whenever the uh, force has the excess has gone outside to bring it backwards and centrally to create an abrupt change in the direction of the anterior capsule. The next video we have uh, already achieved a good uh, anterior capsular excess. I am doing a hydro dissection uh, maneuver. And after doing the hydro dissection maneuver, the, there is a good wave, but the wave doesn't come forward. You can see that there is a dense uh, corticocapsular addition on that side. We keep injecting more fluid, thinking that uh, maybe it will uh, start rotating and I'll get a good uh, delineation. And after a few attempts of uh, dissection, uh, this hydro delineation, uh, eventually, uh, suddenly there is the whole visceral starts coming out, the whole nucleus has come out of the bag, and there is a tenting up of the uh, iris into the anterior chamber. So the tip from this uh, surgical case is that uh, this, if the fluid doesn't come forward, it can cause a temporary intraoperative version of capsular block syndrome. And I've seen one case uh, in which there was even a posterior capsular uh, rupture that happened and a sudden drop uh, in the vitreous. So it is always important to push the nucleus backwards and uh, the fluid to come anteriorly after every round of hydro uh, dissection. This uh, case was a grade 3 cataract, a good rexus had been achieved. I uh, started with the hydro dissection, uh, first uh, taking out some viscoelastic, did the hydro dissection, got a good wave, pressed on the other side, uh, fluid came anteriorly, thought it's going uh, great and started doing the delineation, entered uh, and suddenly the cannula slipped from the uh, syringe and I don't know what had quite happened. I was uh, hoping that things would be fine. Entered with the phaco and the nucleus is all tilted. So, 
had no other option, just uh, put some uh, viscodispersive, viscoelastic uh, below the nucleus. The nucleus is almost now vertical, took out the, extended the wound and had to deliver the nucleus. So the important point is that always ensure that the cannula is tightly attached to the syringe. You can even, while you're injecting, you can hold with your uh, finger so that it doesn't slip from your uh, syringe. Make a tack before you start your delineation and just slightly uh, take it back out your cannula before starting your injection. Don't go up to the very end because sometimes it may block and then when you suddenly it will release and uh, there is a sudden push uh, in during the delineation. This is next case of one of our uh, trainee I was assisting and uh, this happened around last month. The case was high myopia so the trainee was so reluctant, uh, they did not even enter the nucleus trying to just touch the nucleus, go slightly inside and trying to scrape the superficial part and the, I have seen this is one of the most common mistakes done by the trainees. They think that uh, if they will enter the nucleus there is a very high chance of uh, posterior capsule rupture and they will try to keep scraping on the uh, superior part of the nucleus and not going uh, in the proper depth. So as soon as you start going into the proper depth, you will start getting the uh, nucleus chop. So this is basically, a, it was a, you can do a vertical chop. It, it is important to impale the nucleus uh, using a high vacuum and burst mode before you start the chopping. Okay, so white cataract planned a two-stage capsule axis, made a small capsule axis initially and planned to take out the nucleus and then uh, enlarge the capsulorexis. Uh, here I've already impaled the nucleus properly but still there is no, uh, made a small crater but there is no chop. The, I can't divide the pieces. The nucleus is not rotating also so that means it has been properly impaled. So I was wondering why I'm not able to chop. Then I realized maybe the chopper is not uh, appropriate. So we need to create our own set of instruments eventually. You have to have your own chopper, your own excess forceps. And then you, I've got a slightly uh, more sharp and a slightly longer chopper and then Immediately, uh, the chopping was uh, a piece of cake. So, things you have to realize what your instruments are, what your machines are, are doing, your parameters, and everything, and things keep on uh, getting much easier. So, this is a basically a horizontal chop in which you have to. The chopper ha is the main plays a key role in uh, horizontal chopping, especially for the hard nucleus, where you have to take it at, at the end of the nucleus and then bring it in. So, the chopper has to cut through the uh, nucleus to give an effective chop. Uh, the next video is uh, again a case of white cataract and uh, the pieces had already been chopped so I thought that it was uh, fairly easy and uh, as I was chopping I realized, as I was uh, emulsifying I realized that the pieces are getting emulsified but the whole plume is getting dispersed into the anterior chamber and then I realized that I saw a lot of cases of young ophthalmologists that this keeps on happening whereas it doesn't happen in the more experienced hand. So, uh, basically, the occludability is an important concept to understand. Unless until you do, uh, you keep your phaco emulsification power to the desired uh, level. The, it was difficult to emulsify these pieces. Also, started doing on more on pulse mode, which allowed an on time to allow the nucleus to emulsify, and then an off time for it to aspirate, which helped in easier emulsification of the pieces. Also, uh, you can titrate the phaco power by using a linear mode, which you can adjust your power uh, by the, your foot pedal. Uh, another case again uh, white cataract there is hardly any uh, cortical matter the last piece I thought that things are now it's almost over so uh, almost asked to st start opening the lens and here there's the last piece I I'm pretty slow I, I knew that it is it is uh, uh, slightly situation situation with you and suddenly this the capsule came forward and into the your phaco tip but thankfully, I realized it that it had happened. I just did not withdraw the probe, injected some viscoelastic, and then had to implant a multipiece in the sulcus with a posterior optic capture. So, the last piece of emulsification is very important and for young ophthalmologists. It is important if they can use uh, when they can use the viscoelastic to their advantage before taking the last piece. They can maybe from a side pole inject some viscoelastic underneath the nuclear material. Especially in hard cataracts where the settings are usually high and while aspirating the last nuclear fragment, uh, it can cause a sudden uh, post-occlusion surge and a uh, rupture in the posterior capsule. This is another case of a white cataract which was quite uh, hard and brunescent. The phaco emulsification was complete. I was using the screw uh, mechanism injector. I didn't realize that at the back of it, the haptic had not been uh, tugged properly. It was not placed over the IOL. 
the patient was in phaco uh, was in topical uh, anesthesia and now i can't withdraw it i can't take it i can't put it back so i'm stuck in the situation where i don't know what to do and I, uh, the only option i had i thought was maybe to cut the cartridge and then take out this uh, haptic because i didn't want to uh, cut the haptic and then explant it and then put it back luckily for me the cartridge uh, the patient was cooperative the cartridge got cut and the haptic got free so it was a slightly lucky situation so basically loading the lens you most of uh, you know but the both the haptics have to be above your uh, lens for a proper insertion if some because otherwise it can get uh, stuck into your plunger so here the this uh, back haptic is also being uh, put over the lens and that is the best way to in, uh, load it and the last uh, scenario which i'll highlight is this was one of my uh, trainees a post graduate student he was doing i was sitting with him he was not able to take out the last uh, cortical piece or the last cortical fragment i said okay we'll take it out after you put the lens because i thought that he will rupture the lens and the, he injected the lens and there was such a sudden uh, insertion i realized something has happened and he was like awestruck that what to do i just told him that just take a mic first and put the lens horizontally and then i'll maybe i'll have to manage it uh, then he just uh, put the lens horizontally over the capsule i then ex expanded the lens had to there was a large uh, rent in the posterior capsule just because of uh, this uh, sudden trauma did a complete uh, centrio vitectomy and had ultimately had to put a multi piece with a posterior optic uh, capture so injecting the eye you have to um, maintain an adequate pressure always check your plunger uh, injector first because sometimes the inject injector i have seen they get rusted and they have a sudden uh, jerk jerky movements which can lead to such kind of uh, errors uh, also important to orient your cartridge tip downwards so as to also avoid any kind of uh, desmet membrane uh, detachment so that will be in that uh, 10 mistakes uh, i have uh, made or i have seen being made in front of me and i hope you consider them as your own and don't make these mistakes there's always an option to make new mistakes and learn from them thank you so much